Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to build a random walker with Godot and F Sharp. So this is part of my ongoing series, uh, going through all the exercises in the nature of code with Godot 4 and F Sharp. And so in this video, we're gonna be starting with exercise I.1 from the nature of code. And then I'm gonna quickly give you a demo so you can kind of see like, what does this code even do? What does it look like? Uh, then we're gonna go into a solution overview so you kind of understand what the general idea of the architecture looks like uh, because I think this will give a better understanding of the solution code um, and why it looks the way it looks. Uh, I'll leave off with a few places uh, to learn more, including where to get all the source code I'm showing you here and where to get the project files. So you can just kind of clone the, the files, the project and run it yourself. All right, let's go into exercise I.1. Um, so this is traditional random walk. Basically the idea is we wanna build a traditional random walker, um, which is basically just a 2D random walker. So it's gonna have a position, which is X, Y, because it's 2D. Um, we're just gonna init it at the middle of the screen where you want to be able to take a step at every update of um, you know, our game engine. And then we need a way to actually display this on our screen. So I'm gonna quickly give you a demo um, of what my solution looks like. Uh, this is Godot4.net, uh, which enables us to actually run our F Sharp. Okay, so here is the Godot project pulled up. So we can see it's a really simple 3D scene. Um, here's just 3D scene. Here's the random walker. We can see that I have my C Sharp holder here, which we'll talk about later. And then I just have a camera to make sure that we can actually render something. And so I'm gonna press play and we can see what it looks like. Okay, so the project built and here's our cube. That's just kind of jumping around the screen because it's you know, a random walker. Okay, now that we have an idea of what this kind of looks like, let's talk about how the code works from a high level. So remember when we're using Godot and F Sharp, um, Godot can't really talk directly to F Sharp because it just doesn't know how. So we actually have to use C Sharp as an inter intermediary level. And this poses some problems to us. And the main problem is that back in Godot 3, we often would do this C Sharp to F Sharp linking via inheritance, which made it super simple to basically just code our F Sharp almost exactly as we would our C Sharp and connect it to Godot that way. The problem is with Godot 4, they broke that ability to have just simple inheritance and so now we kind of have to use F sharp as a library. And so this imposes some kind of like extra artificial separation between our game engine Godot, uh, the code we would see with C sharp and what we can actually do with F sharp, but it's not all bad. Um, and so if we really lean into this idea, we actually end up with something that kind of looks like clean code or the hexagonal architecture, kind of something like this. And so for our use cases and the way that I've modeled this code, um, basically we're gonna have Godot be this primary driving adapter. We're gonna have C-sharp be the input port and we're gonna have F-sharp be the domain logic. And to zoom back out, it's gonna look like this. So, you know, Godot's the driver with all of its inputs, lifecycle events, etc. C-sharp is translating that stuff into something that our domain kind of understands. And then we have our pure domain app logic kind of all in F-sharp. And so that's an overview of kind of how the solution is gonna work. Um, we went through it fast. If you wanna dive in more, I go into all the details of why this seems like the best way to enter up um, in this video, Godot 4 and F Sharp, which I'll have linked here and below. Okay, so now that we kind of have an understanding of the constraints and why your code might look a little bit weird, we can actually dive into the code and hopefully have an idea of like why it works the way it works. And so our actual solution is Pretty simple. There's really only two files. One, we have that random walk holder C sharp, which we saw actually attached to our uh, Godot scene. And all this is gonna be doing is basically translating any kind of life cycle events or things that Godot is telling us um, into our domain events. So actually talking to you know our F sharp domain that handles all the business logic. And then the other thing it's gonna do is just hold state um, because you know we're gonna be making our F sharp as pure as possible. And then we actually have our F sharp, which is the actual core business logic that we want for a random walker. And so it's gonna be doing things like creating our scene um, and updating everything in our scene, which for now is just you know one walker. So this probably sounds a little bit overly complex. Um, hopefully when we get into the code, it seems a little bit less so. Uh, so let's dive into the code. Oh yeah, I was supposed to update this, um, but basically my source code is available at hammy.xyz at a link which will be in the bottom. So if you wanna look at that while you are uh, following along, uh, check out that link. Okay, now let's go into the code. All right, so I have my Godot project opened up in VS Code. And we're gonna start with our C sharp file, which is our walker holder. And remember, this is the thing that's translating from Godot into something that our domain written in F sharp can understand. Um, and so this should look familiar. We've got our public partial class um, and it is of type node 3D. Uh, this allows us to access everything a node 3D can, which is important because it's attached to you know a node 3D. Uh, the only state we have is this kind of global main object um, scene state. And this is gonna hold everything we want in our scene. Right now it's just a walker. We'll 
we'll get into more of that here. But I kind of like this pattern and I'm playing around with it because it allows me to drive what is in our scene from F sharp and then C sharp can just be a really lean like uh, state holder. We don't actually have to port um, types or anything across. So now let's look at our life cycle. So we have our ready, which happens, you know, right when the node enters the scene, right when we press play. Um, and all this is doing is telling our domain logic in F sharp that, hey, we're ready for you to create the scene, go create it and we'll save off whatever scene state we have. Um, this is a pattern here that you'll see a lot where because we're trying to be deterministic and use pure functions, we're going to basically call into something in F sharp, and then we're going to immediately save off whatever it sends us back. Okay, moving on to the ne next lifecycle function, it's process. And this is what's, you know, kind of the update function that runs every few ticks. Um, and here again, we're saying, hey, domain, we need you to update. And then we're going to be sending it some information it needs to know for how to update from here. Um, and so the first thing we want to send it is the current scene state. Um, and the next thing we're going to send it is any other information we need to process. Um, I found I needed some idea of elapsed time. Uh, this is mostly, mostly for debouncing, so I didn't update too much. But you can imagine that you might want to send other things uh, that Godot knows about, but maybe your, your domain logic shouldn't know about, um, and here to help with processing. And then again, we're just you know saving it off directly. And then the only other interesting part for this kind of translation layer is that we are pulling off uh, the information we need from scene state and then rendering it. Um, and this makes sense because you know, C Sharp is going to have to be in charge basically of any rendering that's happening because it is acting as that um, translation layer. This isn't that interesting now, we're just changing the position position because we are the node 3D. But you can imagine with a maybe more complex scene that has like more different types of entities and more things going on, that this might actually be a quite a bit more uh, fleshed out and maybe its own class or its own uh, function or something like that. So this is the C sharp. It really is just a, a simple translation layer from uh, Godot to our domain logic. And now let's take a look at our domain logic. And so here we are in our random walker. Uh, if you're new to F sharp, module is kind of like a static class. Um, in C sharp, that's what it would appear if you were to try to call it in C sharp. F sharp, this is just mostly how code's written. So I said a few things. So we have our walk step magnitude, like how much do we want to move at each step. We're creating a random here because we'll need it to actually decide which direction we want to take. Uh, this does not create a new random every time. This actually saves it off um, the first time. And we'll use this three throughout. Uh, then we're going to define our types. And this is really common in F sharp that we want to define our domain and types up top, mostly because uh, uh, it's clean, but also because F sharp compiles top to bottom. And so if you want to use anything that you've declared, you've got to do it at the top. Um, and so here we just declare all of our step directions. We're using the discriminated unions that F sharp gives us. So up, down, left, right um, is the only ways that this current one can walk. And then we're defining what our walker is. Right now our walker is just a position. Um, so all it needs is this vector two, which we are taking in from Godot just to make interop a little bit easier. And um, then we have this type process events. And this is what I was showing you of like, maybe we want some extra stuff uh, that Godot knows about, but maybe our our domain logic doesn't. Time is a good one that we, you know, want to let whatever is driving us tell us what time it is. Um, but you can imagine that you might want a bunch of other things. I, I like having these domain objects here, so it's easy to have the types flow across. And so that's why this is here. Next, we have our scene state. Um, you know, some of our process events is a little overkill since we only have one thing in it, but I think it scales really well. So it's nice to just have this um, in place right now. Um, and all it is is a walker because the only thing we're trying to model right now is a walker. So now what I'm gonna do is we're going to go all the way to the bottom because everything in the middle is really just helper functions um, and show you kind of how each of our uh, domain functions are called uh, from those lifecycle events. So the first one we saw is our create and all this is doing is just creating our scene state and because there's just a walker all it's got to do is call our helper function create walker here at zero zero um, which in most 3d things is the middle and it is in Godot. The next thing to show you is our update function and we see that you know it's taking in that scene state the the previous state that we're in a process on the extra information with the process event that we want to use um, in our update um, and then we're calling our helper function here update walker uh, and then we're just returning the new walker that that we've created. Now update walker gets um, a little complicated, but really here's what we're doing is we're just kind of calling a uh, get next walker position when we are ready to you know move our walker. Um, I was annoyed at how fast Godot was running because our, our little box was like jumping around the screen. So I actually created a simple uh, debouncer um, based on our, our milliseconds. It's right now at 200. And actually I think I can just show you what it looks like if I didn't do this. So if we just change the debounce to one, we should see it uh, kind of bouncing around the screen. So let's go and run it. 
here. Yeah, and you can see with the, the debounce set, set really low, um, it's just updating as soon as it goes and Godot runs pretty fast. So it was just too fast um, for the demo. So I just kind of eyeballed 200 milliseconds as a decent debounce and it seems pretty good. Um, we're not gonna go into debouncing here, but here's the code and you can copy paste it from, from the blog post if you're interested. But the real interesting part is, you know, when we are ready to actually update, how are we actually doing that? Um, and so here's get next walker position. Uh, again, it looks a little bit convoluted, but that's because I wanted to make it a little bit faster. Uh, so basically all this is doing is when we call this, it's basically doing this processing of all directions, uh, which is just turning a DU into like an enumeration and then getting the list out um, because this is useful for randomization. Um, but we don't want to do this on every call. So that's why it's here within this like closure so that it's kind of cached. And here's the real function that's um, actually doing, you know, the get next step. Uh, here we're just getting a random index. Here we are uh, figuring out, you know, based on the random index of directions we want to use, what how do we turn that into like a delta for our current position? And this is how we're using our match statement to make sure that we're checking all of the different types um, or possibilities here. And then based on, you know, whatever that delta is, uh, based on, you know, the direction that we're using, all we got to do is get a new position based on the, the current position and the delta. And then we just return our walker here. And that's basically how it works. Uh, it is a little complicated. I went a little wild uh, trying to, you know, optimize things a, a little bit. Um, but I think it's pretty easy to see how this core can pretty easily be uh, extended by simply adding extra types to each of these um, kind of domain events that we're, we're connecting to C Sharp with. So that's how this works. Um, if you want all the project files for this exercise and all the other exercises I'll be doing uh, with the nature of code, uh, I have this in the repo here, my Hamilabs Labs code examples. This repo is available to all Haminian supporters. So if you wanna learn more about becoming a Haminian, uh, head to this link here and it'll also be in the description. So yeah, let me know if you got any questions about Godot or F Sharp or functional programming with game engines or suggestions on how to make it better. Um, I have a feeling a lot of this is a little bit too complicated, but I think, you know, with a few more iterations, we'll get it in a pretty good place to where F Sharp and Godot are really easy to work with. And that's it for this video. So here's where you can find me. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.